Hey everybody, this is Praxis. This might be one of the last chances that we have to save our way of life, and that's what we're gonna talk about in this video, but this is one of those videos that's not particularly visually interesting, so we're gonna take a walk in the woods, and there are some ruins here on the property, and we're gonna go to those ruins and check those out. They're quite old, we've been inside of them, it's really interesting uh, what was created out there, just in the middle of the forest, so we're gonna take a tour around the homestead, into the woods, and check that out while we talk about this last important opportunity to save our way of life. I love the chase and the hunt, and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want, and I always give it 100. Don't need a bank, no, I'm funded. Play the game like it's nothing. I'm always thankful for something. Don't take for granted, stay humble. Now waiting, better believe in your mind, cause it's everything. You can mold, shape, find almost anything. We see majority of Americans who disagree. And so when you are not with where majority of Americans are, then, you know, that is extreme. That is an extreme way of thinking. Hey everybody, this is Praxis Prepper, and I can't say that I'm really excited about the direction that really both political parties are taking at this point, which is if you are different, you're bad, you're part of the problem. Uh, it is absolutely antithetical to what we're supposed to be as Americans. Uh, you know, we're supposed to be kind of like a melting pot here. I didn't I don't think I just coined that, that term. I think that's been something that we've described ourselves as being for the longest time, where we accept people of di uh, different political I ideologies, different uh, races, different religions, different sexual persuasions. Uh, you know, we accept people from all different walks of life for, with all sorts of, uh, you know, variety. And when you have variety, you're not talking about only the homogenous median group that's right in the middle. You're talking about the entire bell curve, both ends of the spectrum, both extremes. Extremes are not supposed to be a bad thing. Now, certainly there are people who are extremely violent or extremely, uh, you know, uh, anger prone or extremely gassy. <laughs> All of these things can be problems, but it's not the fact that they're different that is the problem. It's the, the fact that they're violent, or they're incessantly angry, or angry, or they're incessantly, you know, exuding foul gases or whatnot. It's not the fact that they're different. But we in our society are starting to uh, just get used to the idea that if someone is different from you, they're bad. That used to be something that you know was pumped up by racist organizations. You know, it's those minorities that are the problem because they're different. Racial minorities are extremes. Those are the extremes of the bell curve. If you're a majority white country and you have some black and brown people or Asian people in your population, those are at the extremes of what is normal. If you are in a group and there are a bunch of people that uh, you know are of one religion. You know, yeah, you know, Jewish people. They're they're extreme, right? Because they're they're out out there on the edges. They don't believe what the rest of us believe. I probably just blacklisted this video for being against intolerance because I'm I'm uh, uh, describing some of these intolerant ideas. I'm not advocating for them. I'm advocating against them, and that puts me in the extreme. I live out in the woods. Most people don't like the idea of living off in the woods. I'm extreme. I like growing my own food. Most people don't like the idea of putting in the effort to grow their own food. I'm extreme. I'm part of the problem. I'm someone that might need to be managed potentially. I'm the kind of person that doesn't like going into debt. I like to kind of pay as I go on things. Most people don't like doing that. I must be a dangerous extremist because I don't like to go in and to get debt on things. I think it's a real dangerous problem that I think, God, the fact that I even have to do a video on this is just really depressing because this should be really obvious <laughs> to anyone who is an American that we are supposed to embrace what's different, embrace the new ideas. It's what has made the United States so strong. I know we had some other benefits like building off the backs of you know a population that we were marginalizing. We stole the entire country from you know indigenous people uh, you know there were a lot of resources here there are all those sorts of things as well obviously and those are uh, were seen as being very mainstream back then you know the idea of uh, you know requisitioning, requisitioning land from the native people that that wasn't extreme that was what you did uh, it was the extremist people the, the you know the extreme people that said you know slavery was something that we shouldn't have within our borders the abolitionists were the extreme people <sighs> we got to get out of this idea because it goes nowhere good once we get to the point where anybody who is different is bad, 
and there are plenty of novels about that, and I don't need to, you know, reference exactly which ones those are. You guys know what I'm talking about. This is a really dark road that we're going down, and it's both ends of the, uh, both sides of this political spectrum that we're in. Right now, it's a Democrat saying, you know, if you're different, you're bad, uh, you know, but certainly that is a line that is vomited up by Republicans all the time, too, and the reason they do it is it works with the crowds. You got crowds, they're afraid of things that are different because people are, like, jackasses most of the time. I don't personally like to be a jackass. That makes me extreme because I'm outside of the norm. I also, I was big on recycling before it was really popular. Outside the norm, a dangerous extremist recycler. I, I make my own power here. I'm off grid, creating no uh, you know, carbon pollution, at least now, while I uh, use electricity because we're completely off grid, all renewable. Not many people do that. That's a dangerous, extreme thing to do. This is a really dangerous road to go down, and we really need to put the brakes on it. I know here in the prepping community, we're all sort of resigned to the fact that everything is going to fall apart, and it probably is going to, but that doesn't mean we have to accept it. It doesn't mean that we shouldn't do everything we can to try to put the brakes on it, because it'll be awful. It will, frankly, be just terrible. Our lives, with all the problems that we have in our lives right now, like just earlier today, you know, uh, my ex-wife was visiting over, you know, visiting with my boy, and I, I was just talking. I was uh, making some um, some sprouting seeds every day. It's kind of part of my, my routine. Take some sp some sprouts out, and uh, you know, start some new sprouts, and I'll be eating those sprouts six days from now. And I mentioned to her, ah, I've been having some trouble getting sprouting seeds. I just can't get my or organic sprouting seeds. And she, you know, was kind of uh, you know. Uh, chuckling about that. It's like, oh, you know, you and your problems. And I'm like, yeah, you well, that is why I like being a prepper, so I can keep my problems nice in first world. I love first world problems when my biggest issue is that it's like, oh, I can't get my organic sprouting seeds. Even if your problems are slightly worse than not being able to get organic sprouting seeds when, you know, you, you would prefer to have them, and, I, don't, and I, don't, I only probably have two years left in my pantry, so it's like things are getting really razor thin over here. Even if your problems are even slightly worse than that, they're nothing compared to the SHIT storm that is waiting for us if we can't resolve these issues we have with each other and start living with each other. People like to you know, talk to the, about the Founding Fathers and how they fought for our freedom. Well, they also fought for our ability to live in peace with each other. And it is really shitting on the grave of our Founding Fathers if we take this legacy that they created for us, and again, that legacy involves slavery and stealing land from the Indians and, uh, you know, all these other horrible things, but having gotten through all of that, what we have here is pretty effing awesome and could be even more awesome if we learn to appreciate it and, you know, get off our high horse and, you know, stop thinking just because someone's different that they're bad, except that there are differences in this world. I think that the majority of people watching this video are probably crazy in some way yeah, because I do things differently than you guys do things, you guys do things differently than I do things, and that's a good thing. That's what makes us strong is because we have such diversity of thought. There are benefits to having a totalitarian state like China where it is top down, you do what we say, you know, and everybody has to get in line behind that. There are benefits to that, and I don't mean like benefits for human nature, I mean there are benefits for efficiency and utility of getting things done. You know, when they're, you don't have this kind of uh, discussion back and forth. You know, if you're even in town government and you want to get something done, you know, there's an efficiency. If you just have like a town dictator and they're like, we're going to build this bridge and that's all there is to it. It saves you a heck of a lot of time. You don't have to like be chatting about like, well, should we do it this way or that way? You know, there's an efficiency. There are benefits to that. But there are so many more benefits from taking the collective thinking of all the different people, different people, extreme people with different extreme ideas all, all over the spectrum, and simmering that together and seeing what comes out of it. Because what comes out of that is always more interesting, more evolutionarily strong than what is going to be the result of one brain or one group think. And that's all I have to say about that. This is really, really dangerous, the road that we're going on. And even the people out in this audience that are like, yeah, you know, just bring it on. We'll have a, a good old fashioned civil war and that'll just solve all the problems. You know, open up a history book. Just, just one history, no, just one. You could get the wrong history book. We've been doing homeschooling with my boy. We, uh, we, we got a, uh, it was a Christian history book. Uh, we're not Christians, but uh, you know it happened to be what was available, and it was it was a great opportunity to uh, give him the chance to kind of filter 
what's opinion and what's fact, uh, you know, through this particular uh, history book. So it was a, a great opportunity uh, like that. But, you know, there were all sorts of things in that history book that they just totally glossed over, like all, like all the things about uh, the Native Americans being booted off of their land and everything. It was, it's, it's barely a footnote in that history book. So I don't know if I can say go out and get one history book, but get any sort of real history of what it's like to live through real conflict. I haven't done it, but I know just from secondhand uh, sources and, oh my God, it's, it's just like, it, it will be awful. It'll be so awful, and all the first world problems that you have right now, you'll be wishing that you could get back to this world where it's like your worst problem is you got your ir irritating extremist neighbors who are just different from you because they're extreme and they're on one end of the extreme, you're on the other end of the extreme. This, that, is so much better than having your neighbors trying to kill you and you trying to kill them and you go out into your garden and you want to just pick a tomato and you need an armed guard and people looking at the perimeter of the woods and people on watch at night. <sighs> and it's also avoidable. It's all so avoidable by learning to coexist with other people. And the only way we, apparently we can do that is to stop listening to our politicians. Joseph Biden is not your messiah. He's not going to save you. Barack Obama was not your messiah. He's not going to save you. Donald Trump is not your messiah. He's not going to save you. These people, uh, you know, generally speaking, are there and they either are trying to do the best that they can or their own for, or they're there for their own uh, aggrandizement. <laughs> you can, you know, uh, you know, pick and choose between all those uh, politicians which, which uh, label I would pr uh, probably apply to one or the other. But, um, you know, they are there at best to be followers. Leaders in our country, generally speaking, are followers. It's the people that have to do the leading. You and I, we are the ones that have to be the extreme groundbreakers. We go out there, the politicians use their focus groups, try to figure out what direction we want them to lead us in, and then they pretend that they came up with the idea. But the ideas don't start with the politicians. They aren't the leaders, we are the leaders. You are the leader, I am the leader, and we're doing it right now in the only way that we can get the politicians to start acting like adults and talking like adults and advocating that we all speak like adults is by you and I starting to speak like adults. And that starts with accepting that people are different. That's something we try to do here on uh, you know this channel in comments. We always try to be polite and civil. I screwed up the other day. There was someone and they left some kind of a comment and it seemed like they were spamming and I had like some smart ass kind of comment. Uh, they, they, there were some misspellings in there and there was punctuation area, errors in there. And whenever somebody leaves like something that I think is supposed to be a mean spirited comment, um, I, I'm never a grammar Nazi on anyone, except if they, I think that they're trying to be kind of a jerk. As it turns out, they, it was just sort of a technical issue and their hand is broken. <laughs> and that's why they're with a the typo. So me being all snotty about it, um, I apologize uh, because I, I thought they were doing one thing when they let me know, it's like, well, geez, you know, I had technical, technical issues. That's why the comment posted five times. I got a broken hand. That's why I can hardly type. I was like, you know, I'm sorry. I shouldn't, have I shouldn't have responded to you in that way. I misunderstood. And one of the bravest things that any of us can do is to learn to apologize and admit to the world, admit to ourselves that we're not perfect. None of us are perfect. I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. We all make mistakes. And if we can accept that, accept that I'm going to make mistakes, accept that the people around me are going to make mistakes, it's going to make it a heck of a lot easier to live with those people if they are accepting that they make mistakes sometimes, and I accept that they make some mistakes sometimes. And it's going to be a lot easier for them to live with me if I also accept that I can make mistakes sometimes and admit when I'm wrong. So think about that. What we have to lose is enormous. It is enormous what we have to lose. I prep because I don't have the greatest amount of confidence that we are go going to meet this challenge historically through he reading history books. Humans don't tend to meet the challenge. They do not tend to do it. They uh, find something that works for them, they ride it into the ground, usually it's some kind of a resource that they discovered, you know, uh, here in the western world we discovered oil and it just catapulted us, it, literally, into the stratosphere. Uh, you know, in other societies they, they found, you know, you know, forests that were, they were able to, you know, use the, the, the wood in those forests, or they were able to find, uh, you know, some other kind of, uh, you know, raw uh, natural resource, and they just use it and use it and use it into the ground until it's gone, and they thought that they were great because of their own abilities, and really it was that natural resource. But all the details aside, it's really important to consider what we have to lose, because what we have right now is 
amazing. It's wonderful. It is, it's a gift to be able to stand here in front of this camera and not worry about what's over there or what's over there. I mean, I kind of pay attention to it, but I'm not really worried that there's a sniper over there ready to shoot at me. I'm not worried that there's like some guy over here that's ready to raid my place. We still have rule of law and that is, that is worth an awful lot. And we're not going to hold on to that if we start accusing everyone else of being an extremist that needs to be, you know, dealt with. That's all I have to say about that. Thanks for watching. This episode has been brought to you in part by Prescott Caliber Club and Jeske Defense Strategies. Prescott Caliber Club is a federally licensed firearm manufacturer and retail store specializing in firearms, survival gear, and producing great online content. If you want to thank them for supporting this channel, go check them out at prescottcalclub.com. Please subscribe and tune in every week for new videos. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so through Patreon or PayPal.